Oh man. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Usually Wrong, episode number 65. This is the second episode with Dave Kelly. He was episode number two of this show, and he's back. Uh, I don't really have anything coming up except for uh, Real Pittsburgh Stories. That's at Arcade Comedy Theater. Uh, That is August 9th. That is a Friday, I believe. Come out to that. I don't know how much tickets are, but whatever the cost, totally worth it. That's put on by Dave Stewart. Should be a really fun show, so come on out to that. Uh, Dave Kelly, I had an amazing conversation with him about a year ago on this podcast, episode number two. Uh, It was great, and I wanted to bring him back on because we had so much more to talk about, and he's somebody I should be hanging out with a lot more. He just started a uh, podcast called the Bold Cast Podcast the b-o-l-d cast uh was part of a very fun group uh called unparalleled height now uh a part of the metal band tethra t-e-t-h-r-a just letting you letting you know how it's spelled uh and then started a firm started a marketing firm social aura marketing a-u-r-a see that one you might have needed uh check dave out he's one of the most interesting people that i know and enjoy this episode of Usually Wrong, episode number 65, with Dave Kelly. When we finally got down to something which the individual says he really wants to do, I will say to him, you do that and forget the money. Because if you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. You will be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living. That is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing, than a long life spent in a miserable way. Yeah, I know. Well, it's, 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 well and that's the thing. I mean, it's easy like when you're talking with your hands and shit. Luckily for you, like I said, I started my... Well, here's the thing. Yes. Couldn't find my camera today. Oh, I, as soon shit. as I left, my dad texted me. He's like, <laughs> yeah, actually, I see it upstairs. I'm like... <laughs> do you want to record this? I can go get my uh, my tripod do from you, the car. Give me one second. Do you... Well, do you... The problem is I don't have my camera with me. That's the only problem. It's okay. I can use this. Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah, do it. Let's do it. Absol- absolutely. It's 100%. That's a great idea. You got it. All right, usually wrong. This is my uh, second appearance on here. Nate's running out to grab uh, a tripod so we can have a video format of this today, which is pretty awesome. So um, in case you're not familiar with me, I'm sure Nate will give me a nice introduction in the, in the intro when he records it. But my name is David Kelly. I was the second guest, I believe, on this podcast when it launched. And as I came in here, Nate and I were talking about how that was the second episode. That was in March of 2018. I went back and listened to it um, for a number of reasons. I just want to see, you know, what we talked about, what I was doing at that point in my life and how I was thinking and stuff like that. And it's interesting to compare because that's almost a year and a half ago. So we uh, I'm excited to talk to Nate because last time that conversation was like, just so therapeutic, I think, for myself and for Nate. So I'm really looking forward to diving into this one. And he's getting the camera set up now. That's perfect. I need to get one of those myself. You do. Well, I use it for, I use it for stand-up. That's a really good point. Yep. Yep. That's what I was going to say. 60 seconds. Man, you're probably good. If it dies, it dies. Right? <laughs> That's my favorite quote about anything. <laughs> Caffeine. I have been honestly. Like you've been fucking busy. Yeah, very. Um, I assume you've been busy yourself. <laughs> podcast. So what? You got po- the podcast, stand up. Yeah. And your job. Work. Right. Yeah. And then what other fun stuff? Lovely girlfriend Monica. Okay, I was gonna say I don't know if that's like I don't know if we we're allowed to talk yeah. about that. No, or we can talk. Yeah. About okay. it. She comes up all the time. Okay. This because she's great. Yeah. We were talking. Um. No, you know, I think it was right after we recorded. We yes. started talking. Yeah, I think okay, it was right okay. after that. Okay, yeah. When we started talking. Because I remember, you know, I 
I said like I went back and listened to the podcast. We t- mm-hmm. briefly were touching on relationships. In the well, last I was one. just getting out of a pretty awful relationship. So oddly enough, that I was, was in the right. middle of of a pretty bad one myself. Oh. Not a bad one, just like. You know, it just wasn't. Um, it didn't really fit for either of us, so to speak. Different, just different paths. Yeah, it was in just life. no, That's not even same. actually too similar. I think we were too similar. Too for, similar. Yeah. Tell me so, what you mean. So, by like, that. I think what I mean by that is, um, you know, oddly enough, my mom and I are very similar people. So I'll use this example. Okay. Like, we bought heads a lot because okay. of it, right? I, we're very similar people. Both, both very passionate. And that can turn into anger, sadness, frustration, all a whole host of things. The girl I was dating at the time, very much like myself, very driven, very, um, you know, how do I approach? Just intense, per, in, uh, approaching life with intensity. Okay. And what I found during that relationship, and I thought that's what I needed, right? I'm like, I need somebody that's like that who's going to understand how I am. Yeah, you think that it's going to motivate you to do other things. And yeah. Things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again. And what I found was that, that might not have been what I needed as much. Um, I, oddly enough, just got in a relationship a couple months ago. And she's much more um, just like laid back. Definitely a motivated person. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Uh, extremely hard worker, too. I mean, she works a lot of hours. She's in the process of leaving that job and, and starting her own business, oddly enough. Oh, wow. But just a different approach to life. She kind of like balances me out a lot more you know what i mean it's yeah. like like a yin and yang kind of thing yeah some people thrive off of that yeah. some people don't like i find uh some people they need somebody to who is also motivated yes for me yeah i i, I could see that well that i think it work for you it's almost more one of those things for me that i think that was really interesting was thinking that I needed something, but really what was best for me was not that, you know? Oh, yeah. And being, That's having an open life, mind man. to, like, accept that and move on from that. I mean, I after that relationship ended, I I didn't talk to anybody or date anybody for, like, eight months. Oh, really? At all. Yeah, and I, I lost Your a lot of hope sick. in that aspect for, for, not, for a number of reasons. But, you know, I think, like, anything, there's a reason why these things, you know, you go through those situations and during that time I also was going through a lot of other stuff with like business music changes and stuff like that yeah and I needed to figure that stuff out and um on the other side I've come out of it and I'm like whoa I needed to go through all of that yeah Surely, oh, isn't know? it so funny such a weird thing man life is just you think you have it figured out and just oh yeah I don't think people should ask for suffering but Pete Holmes talks about this a lot on his yeah. podcast but the amount of suffering that I've gone through in my life that I would have never asked for yeah. has benefited me greatly as a human being. I, I'll, I'll give you the most micro example. I dated a girl as we were, as last time we recorded, yeah. it was days, days after <laughs> just this breakup. And it was, oh over. Like, it was the worst. Yeah. It was the worst. We didn't, uh, nothing. We dated for two and a half years. I hardly saw her in 2017. It was wow. 2018. Hardly. Because yeah. she lived in New Jersey. Yeah. And okay, that's I, right. Yeah. I think back and I'm like, why didn't I just break up with you then? Why didn't I do that a year ago? But it was like, if I didn't stick it out until until then, I wouldn't have met the girlfriend that I'm with now. That's exactly who's right. Who's great. That's and exactly I, right. But I, ha- I go through this battle thinking that stuff. And it's like, Dude. if I, yeah. if I ch- keep trying to regret, if I regret, all of that, it's like, well, what does that say about where I'm at right well, now? Well, and that's the thing. It's, it's a it's, happy place I'm in right now. It's exactly right. And that's like, you can't see that stuff when you're going through no, it. No, right? you can't. So you can only really, and I think it was Steve Jobs said something like, you know, you can only connect the dots looking backwards. Yeah. So now, you know, some stuff I went through, which we can obviously dive into since the last time I was on here. Oh, yeah. I saw it as I was going through. I'm like, this sucks. I hate this. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't want to go through this stuff. But now I look back and I'm like, wow, that I would not be where I am now if I was not going through that. And what I can say moving forward is I know that's going to happen again. Oh, yeah. And again and again and again. But I'm approaching with a mindset of like learning from it instead of being like, oh, this sucks. This really sucks. This I just don't want to be doing this. Yeah. Well, guess what? That's life. <laughs> You're going to yeah. everybody's going to endure <laughs> things they necessarily do not want to. And if you try to like bitch about it and complain about it, you're only going to make that suffering worse. Yeah. And it's just, I think it's to really to like learn as much as you can in those situations. Yeah. It's all about framing. I mean, even, you know, my girlfriend now, she's going through a massive life transition. Yeah. 
I'm not going to say too much because don't I don't know what she wants it. me to say. Don't get into but, it. <laughs> but like what I'm what I told her was it's like, look, you can look at these things either as a negative or a positive. Yeah. And I got news for you. The only thing that separates those two is your choice of how you're looking at those two things. Oh, yeah. And that's going to dictate while you're going through it. Because I have complete faith that she will come out on the other side great. Yeah. But it's like, what do you want right now? Do you want right. to be framing it from a positive light so that you see the growth as it's happening? Or do you want to wait until it's over with and then, you know, kind of pivot it and see it then? I would think after going through this a, a couple times myself, it's better to frame it from a positive light as much as you oh, can. yeah. Because you have to go through it anyway. Can I give you a compliment? Please. I have never met somebody in my entire life so much that I... I could never see you being like a grumpy old man. You're <laughs> so wise. I don't think people really well, think you. about this stuff. Yeah. That is true, though. Like, yeah. I could never see you being like a 60, 70 year old yeah. guy sitting in, and nothing wrong with being a wheelchair, no. but like just upset that he didn't do things with life. You know what, you Nate? Know what I mean? Like, that, first of all, that's a, one of the best compliments I've ever gotten. So well, thank you very it's much. true. Um, but. Oddly enough, Nate, that actually is my entire life philosophy because my grandfather is 92 years old. Okay, so yeah. he sits there. He's still like really good health, really good mind. And he will say to me, I have no regrets in my life. That's great. It's like, isn't that crazy? 92 years of life. Yeah. I mean, this this guy was the end. Basically, he was going to be in the uh, invasion of J mainland Japan had we done that not drop the atomic bomb right yeah. wow so that's how wow. long ago wow. like you know he was the 18 old years old then. the old <laughs> generation great. like yeah. the end of the world war ii yeah, generation yeah. and all the stuff that generation went through the great depression oh yeah world war ii a korea vietnam all those different things and you know he had he started his own business um not necessarily i don't think it failed but he ended up moving in to a more stable career after that and it, just okay. all the lines of stuff that he did in his life and what could have and he says he has no regrets and i'm like man that's powerful yeah like that means that he did what he wanted and you know what what he did with his life maybe that's not what i want but i want to be able to say that same thing to, oh, my, yeah. to my grandchild oh exactly when i'm if i'm 60 or 90 or if i'm blessed enough to live that long and that is and i said this last time i always work backwards in my life yeah. so I don't want to be that grumpy old man. Oh, no. Because I, I've seen that. Oh, yeah. I've seen it a million times. I grew up in churches. Right. I, uh, seriously, <laughs> it's man. It's the best place I to grew, find it. Oh, yeah. it's the best yeah. place to find it. Just grumpy people upset that they didn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah. I, I, I could be a jerk about it as much as I want. No. But this is why I started. It's real, man. And why I started doing this last year. I rem this. That's the mission statement of this podcast, I feel like. And that's, that's the thing, man. We <laughs> need I mean? more people talking about these things okay because and talking about what's important like you know what's important in life is not retiring okay and then living your You're life in a retirement analyzing office yeah. all right <laughs> okay. but Don't, like okay I'm just kidding I'm look just kidding no but seriously though this is <laughs> no, a real I thing get what you're retiring is important especially for a lot of people but to it's the mindset though it's not the retirement that this is the problem the, ret the problem is when you base your entire life around like, oh, I'm going to do that when I retire. I'm going to do that. I'm going to travel when I retire. That. Okay, really? So so you're going to be 60-something years old, okay, and then you're going to start living your life? I don't think so. I think that life, that there's you have one chance. There's no redo button on life. Right. So you should, every single day you get up, you should, it, it, again, this is my opinion, but you should be living it how you want. And if you don't like what you're doing, you have the power to choose to change that. And I'm if you don't think you. you do, you're wrong. <laughs> You've been brainwashed I'm, to believe that. I'm completely that. agreeing with you. Yeah. And I, I talked about last year. I think about it from a nine to five perspective. Like, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with having a nine to five. Of course but, not. But if you're, if you're miserable that's with thing. what you're doing, yeah. like, I can't. It's That's lost on me, man. That, <sighs> that sucks. And I feel bad for people, too, because you too. get into these situations. I, deal, I do retirement planning. Yeah. I, a couple... Maybe it was a couple months before we sat down. I don't know if I talked about this last time, but there was a guy that I was sitting down with. I'd met him for the first time. He was 58, worked at his firm for a long time. They cut him, 58 mm. years old, but two years before his pension was going to kick in. Wow. Left, there's <laughs> things like that. There's stories like that that I remember a lot. And that's the thing. See, that's what's so funny. I was uh, talking 
with my girlfriend the other day about you What's know your girlfriend's name. Her name's Ashley. Ashley. Yeah, she's right. great. She's a great person. <laughs> um, she true like truly, if I could say a couple things about her real quick, she's the most Please. caring person that I've ever met. Like in my entire life, maybe other than like my mother. Okay, <laughs> but uh, honestly, like what she, what she was saying to me, and this is I think a, a fear that anybody who goes a non traditional route in life, like you know yourself or or yourself. Me, experiences right oh yeah fear you're afraid because you think you're gonna fail and this and that but then there's examples of like what you just talked about oh yeah you th- th- that man probably thought i'm gonna retire and i'm gonna have this pension or the you know these retirement accounts and, blah, and that's just swept out from under your yeah, feet yeah just something that's not even his fault right something that's, not that's how his fault. you know what it goes back to it's control you, you don't control that situation you know what there's a lot of things in life we can't control right and my my thing is I always want to try to limit how much that exists for myself. Right. I want to base my income off of directly my work. Right. right. So whether or not I make X dollars or Y dollars, it doesn't it's not because of some company I'm working for. It's because right. of what I'm doing. Right. Right. So that to me is very important. And, you know. I'm going to throw out a Gary V reference here. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course, I have this to. I have to. For that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you have a better chance in life of being struck by lightning 13 times than even being born. Period. So anything that you want to do with your life, start, you know, become a successful stand-up comedian, run a huge podcast, you know, be a successful musician, whatever you want to do. Just think about that for a second. Your existence in and of itself is 440 trillion it's to crazy. one. It's wild. And the fact that you and I could sit here and have a conversation That's crazy. is so insane, right? So anything you want to do with your life, it's how you're framing it to yourself. Yeah, it's is it scary to, you know, to quit your job and go do what you want with your life and stuff? Yeah, but you know what? It feels really fucking good when it works. Oh, yeah. When <laughs> and it, it will work some if you're willing to put your time Some in. people I feel like can't. With some, different, not everybody's meant not, to do that. Exactly. Yeah, that's not And I'm not making thing. that argument. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can yeah. I guess a symptom yes. of an, an end result of what you're saying? All right. I'm going to ask you a question. This is not meant to be a leading question. I'm yeah. going to get some because I cut myself. <laughs> <laughs> Were you ever a, a fat kid? Were you? You know what? Were you ever um, a bigger person? Yeah, uh, a couple of we- uh, a couple of months ago. Now, uh, a couple so of months ago. well, no, oddly enough. So this br- brings up an interesting. Thing. I'm prepping for a bodybuilding competition right now, so I've uh, lost see, okay. 22 pounds in like six weeks, seven yeah. weeks. I got to lose another 20 some pounds. Um, Get, my I'm coach gonna told pause me, this go real quick, go for it. That is the worst. <laughs> mosquitoes need to be eradicated from the earth. <laughs> I fucking hate that. Mosquitoes have been just devouring me this summer for some reason. That means they, they you're uh, you're sweet, right, That's or something like that. Yeah. You, they, they are only attracted to people that are awesome people. So there you yes. go. That's hard why they don't come after me. You're a hard worker. <laughs> okay, so so you're training for a bodybuilding competition. I yeah. have a reason for asking. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say. So I'm actually curious. I'm um, probably. Sh- I feel like at a uh, point in time in my life, I was like really skinny when I was a kid, and then then I was like kind of chubby and then like i i don't know 
It's weird. Like, I've been both, I guess. Yeah, you Not, like, look, fat, but, like... No, I understand. Yeah. But you look like somebody who worked to be a muscular person. Oh. Worked yeah. <laughs> very yeah. hard. Yes. Like, that mm-hmm. seems... Not that it's wrong to be fat, but you worked of hard course. to yeah. get there. Like, you... It lo- you... You physically embody somebody who worked really hard to get somewhere. Well, I appreciate you saying that because that a though? lot of people think like, oh, yeah, that's just how you were, you know, born. It's like, yeah, no, <laughs> no, it's not. It's not I graduated high school at just to give you. Uh, so I'm like six, almost six, three. So I graduated high school like 205 pounds. I'm right now 257 and I'm probably about 12 13 percent body fat i need to be four percent body fat on stage what do you when do you have to be so what? september 7th and september 21st are the shows i'm doing okay. so um i have another like i'm like 10 weeks out from the main show and like eight from the other right one. but anyway going back to your question because nobody cares about that but <laughs> no anyway, that's but, why i asked yeah okay curious so, about so oddly enough nate i think that in and of itself has changed my mind on a lot of things because when I first started seeing how I could transform my body both putting on muscle losing fat anything like that and everybody I know who's been able to do that themselves has said this too you realize like if I can control my body I can pretty much do anything I want with my yeah life. and like discipline like I get like I'm not looking you know for pity or something here but I've not cheated my diet in seven weeks that's great i've eaten the same thing that's so great <laughs> constantly cutting out calories but you're working towards something that's the like, thing and that's the that's the point it. like i've tried dieting and doing this stuff before and getting lean and it's just not the same like when you have an end date and you have a goal you're working towards yeah you're like tunnel vision on that you right. know that's why I haven't gone to the gym in 25 See, years. See, that's the thing. That you just got to gotta just do a bodybuilding show, and then you'll be there every day. You know what it is? I think it's just the diet. I like going to the gym. I like running. And then it's just, I would rather eat chick fucking filet for soda. a day and have soda. Man, I'll, I'll drink, I don't know. And you know what I like? I like IPAs. That's another problem that I have. Missing alcohol a lot. Um, oh, can you not drink? Can't drink. Can't drink, <laughs> can't eat anything other than what I'm prescribed by my coach. Um, and to the average person listening, yeah, that sucks. To me, it does suck, <laughs> but it's seeing how that changes my body. And as I'm doing this prep, it's just like a, it's like a, it's like a reaffirmation or reconfirms to myself that I can do anything I want. And, so yeah. can any of you listening to this. Like, I don't care if you're 400 pounds. You can get down to 200 pounds if you want. It might take you a long time, but it is possible. Anybody can lose weight. Anybody can can get ripped or whatever, like, whatever your end goal is. Anybody yeah. can lift weights. It's not like, but, and I promise you, if you're, if you're somebody that's listening who wants that in their life, and then you look at the other areas in your life and you're like, you know, I think I could prove a lot of areas in my life. Oh, yeah. That would be the first place I would start. Well, the only reason I ask that is I, d- I have good sets days that I, yes. I do work out. And I do go to the gym. Absolutely. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I go to the gym. <laughs> I, can, I you know. can tell by looking at you. Seriously. <laughs> That's I can, not I can true. Tell. No, I can tell you is, work out, This though. is bald. This is like. I'm not saying you're a bodybuilder, but. Fat. I'm like a skinny, fat fucker, man. <laughs> That's not even true. That's such a lie. You lied <laughs> right there. No, 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 no. <laughs> diet is different than. Diet is more what you see in somebody than the gym. If that makes sense. No, what does I that could mean? T- so like, so I could tell pretty easily by looking at somebody. Usually, like especially people who go to the gym, yeah. like whether or not they eat clean or not. You oh, know, okay. my coach and I were just talking. Okay, about I this. bet. It's like, you know, a couple months ago, I was having this thing because I knew I was starting this prep. I'm like, I need to get it all out of my system. I need to eat yeah. everything I want to eat, right? And <laughs> yeah. then it's like, okay, you're 275 and you need to lose like 40 pounds for the show. You probably shouldn't have done that. Like, oh my you, you god! Know? So um, I'm not I'm not saying I was like some obese person or something. I mean, I was a big 275, but the way I feel and look now, I love so much more. Yeah, you know, and that just and and you again, feel better. You think feel better with that's yourself the thing. Right and now. how yeah. does that radiate through everything else I do in my life? Yeah, it it impacts everything in such a in such a positive light. And that's why I say to people, if you're just in this point where you like you're just stuck. You don't like your job. You don't like your. You just don't like your life in general. Look at like, you're depressed. Maybe you're. You have a ton of anxiety. Things like this. All things I've experienced. Look at your like physical fitness. Not yeah. saying you got to become and do what I do, but maybe start feeding your body a little bit better. Maybe you eat 
better, healthier 80% of the time, and then you eat whatever you want 20% of the time. Yeah. That'll make a massive difference in yourself if you're eating the other side. Maybe you're eating 20% of the time you're eating well, 80% of the time you're not. You'll just feel so much better. And then suddenly, your mindset in life is just improved. Oh, yeah. It's just one aspect, but I think it's, that's overlooked by a lot of people. It is little things like that. Since we've done this pot, the last one, I have started and stopped smoking. <laughs> I started... And then I stopped. Really? Like a year, yeah. Almost like in bet- right in between. So how long? Podcasts. Just a year. I started smoking. Wow. Like almost right after we, we started doing the yeah. podcast. And then, and then recently I'm just like, oh, I'm feeling bad. Why am I feeling bad all the time now? <laughs> oh, maybe it's this like drug I'm <laughs> inhaling into my... Maybe it's this tar I'm inhaling into my lungs. And I'm like, I still like it, but yeah. it's like I... I, w- as soon as I cut that out, I'm like, I feel a million times better about everything. Yeah. I feel more motivated to do this yes. shit. I feel more motivated to write. I feel, and uh, when I eat healthy, I That's feel exactly right, so That's exactly good. Right. Yeah. I don't know if that works on everybody, but for me, it was if, as, if I'm every day taking steps to actually feel better. I'm going to fucking feel better. And you're going to do better. And I'm right? going to do better. Every, your podcast too. is going to be better. Mm-hmm. Your stand up is going to be better because why because you can write better bits and you know right i mean everything's gonna your job you're going to be excited to come into work oh yeah right you're not going to dread the meetings and then oh i gotta record the podcast and then oh, oh i yeah. gotta go to the gym like fuck no it's like i'm ready for this you know? i think it's because i'm I've, i'm making steps in something if i don't feel like i'm making progress in something I shut off. Like I, Man. it's just like that's why it's so hard for me to go to the gym sometimes. It's because I could work out for yes for two, but that's me being impatient. I could work out for two weeks in a row, not see anything, and then it's like, okay, well, why don't I go eat fucking <laughs> salt and pepper Lay's potato chips, which well, are the best. You know what? I bet I'm gonna take a I'm gonna <laughs> okay. take a bet here Please that do. you're like me. You're a person of extremes. Um. Yeah, I would say so. My, in a lot of things in my life, I'm either in the top quartile or the bottom quartile. That's what I meant. Yeah. You know so what I like mean? So, like, you're either, like, you either see the benefit and you're all in or you're like, eh. Oh, yeah. I get it. Yeah. That, that's it. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, that's for sure. I think that, and that doesn't surprise me. That's why you do stand up and why you do a podcast and why you're able to do your the job you do, right? right? And people that sit in the middle a lot, you know. They're they're not per- people it's with hard, extremes. Yeah. They're okay with the, with you know going to the gym and doing what you said and this and that. But you're probably like, you know what? That is. It. I can't handle being mediocre. That's it. Yeah. Right. So I'd rather be the worst at something than in the middle. And that is true. I yes. Just I'm dude. You. I'm that's telling you, that's me. It. Yeah, that's me. And it's yeah. a lot of people who are wi- we're wired very similarly. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are, are like that. It's like if I can't, like if I can't be amazing or like work towards being amazing at something. Oh yeah, I'm not even gonna do it. No, and why would you? Well, I've had a lot so of that hard stuff to happen. stop start stand up too. Yeah, it's so hard. Like I remember uh, two and a half years ago this way. It's so hard to start stand up because you just gotta sit at the open mics. Nobody talks to you for eight months, and you have to you have to prove that you're worth talking to. And that's the same thing with me. Yeah. Like I don't like talking to. Newer people who I don't think are funny. And I've said it a million times on this, and it's kind of mean, <laughs> but it is true. It's like I would rather, I don't want to talk to people who aren't funny. Yeah. And that's, I, dude, I get it, man. Ha- that's yeah. why I think it's really hard for people to start. Well, and think up. about like, you know, the difference too, like with something like stand up. You're by yourself. Oh, yeah. You don't have bandmates. You don't have, yeah, for sure. A, like a, you know, team. Exactly. It's you, right? Yeah. You're by yourself. That's, that is an extremely vulnerable state to be in. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and you're going and to be personable on stage yeah. too. A lot of That's growth. I'm assuming a lot of growth comes with that. Oh yeah, for sure. Both personal and professional. For you sure. Know? Yeah. And it's been a good year. Um yeah, that's why to me, you know, I think that people like when I was at the beginning of this prep, I was just I had so much like fear. I'm like I got to do 4 months of this and it's going to suck the worse the further I go into it. Yeah. And I th- additionally, like a lot of people do shows and stuff like that. They probably have like nine to five jobs. They're not, they don't own their own business like I do. They don't, you know, they're not a musician. They're not yeah. shooting music videos. They're not doing all this different stuff. So I can make any excuse I want. Yeah. But I've not missed. How is owning your business? So it's good. So What's I should called? probably, so Please I should play. probably, I should probably uh, talk about what I do. Yeah. <laughs> so since last time I came on here, 
I was working like part time jobs and trying to start what I'm doing now. Right. So I do digital marketing. So I have a company called right. Social Aura Marketing. Social and what? Aura. Like A U R A. Yep. Marketing. Great. And what? And I will say this: that company is just me right now. <laughs> so That's great. I don't have employees or anything, great. but I have clients in uh, the fitness um, community or industry, I guess I should say, real estate. Uh, I worked with a politician who ran for state senate. I'm going to be working with her again soon. Oh, that's fun. I my brother ran for state house. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Win, lose, lose, lose lost. He's 21. He was well, going up. He has a, a lot of more. He's chances. going up against she's a 70 year old. That's the thing. The girl I worked with. She's incumbent. 25, so she's our age. Yeah. Tons of opportunity. Our, she's yeah. running for something pretty awesome coming up, and I don't want to say it yet, but I'm don't so stoked to, to, to work it. on that project. Um, uh, electrical contractor. Um, I do a lot of web design stuff. So like those, the, those are right now what I have in terms of like month to month kind of clients. And then I do a lot of like web design. Yeah. So, you know, that comes and goes and things like that. But man, I love it. Like I really love yeah. it. And it's oddly enough, you and I both went to business school, right? Yeah. So we both went, time I met you. I met yes. you in that class. So we met at university of Pittsburgh. Dude, I think about we, that class. We met maybe what two. ethics and yeah, it was ethics yeah. with Neil Fogarty. Yes, <laughs> Neil Fogarty. Was like, what was that guy's name? What was that fucking so guy's I, name? all I remember is the movie that we watched in that class. That's it. Oh, what was the movie? It was something about like how not to, you know, it was some Wall Street guy who was super corrupt and like, oh, you shouldn't be like that. It's like, okay, I'm pretty sure every fucking person on Wall Street's like that. Yeah. But um, not to overgeneralize. You know but what? Another on. guy from our group was in is on Wall Street now. That Brandon Chu. Oh, you remember yeah, that guy? yeah, yeah. I remember him. I, I, he was from New York, so I was, was like, that doesn't York. surprise he me. He was like York. from Manhattan. And there was or that other girl. Um, oh, I yeah, he was in our group for that project. Yeah, he was that in main project, whatever project. we did. I don't remember what we did, but we did. Oh, I forget. I really forget. I, <laughs> like, I really feels forget. Like a lifetime. That was like a whole. It was like one of those classes where the whole semester was a group, and then you worked with a group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, where I was going with that is, um, <laughs> people are always like, oh yeah, so like you know, because my so my your what your concentration was because all of us finished with a uh, finance. Yeah. Okay. So you were finance. I was marketing. So everybody's right. like, oh, it makes sense. That's why you're in a marketing company. No, it's not. <laughs> no. Actually, not at all because. I learned nothing about digital marketing no. in college. L literally nothing, no. okay? Yeah. So no, everything that I, like the reason I felt justified and compelled to start that kind of company was I marketed my band a lot. Music videos, yeah, exactly. you know, social media, stuff like that. So I started doing social media yeah. exclusively. I had, and this was at like maybe April, May last year, I had two clients paying me very little per okay. month, okay? Just helping some people out. Yeah, sure. I was working those part-time jobs and, you know, I'm like, why am I doing, like, I went to Europe on a European tour. Yeah, yeah, because when I was talking last time I was here, I went back and listened to the last podcast. It was a couple months before I went to Europe. Yeah. Went on that European tour and, you know, I had so many just revelations about my life. And I'm like... Europe does that to you. Yeah, man. And just being... Where were you at? So I was, <laughs> I was in, we flew into Paris... We were, there was a Download Festival of Paris, which was a massive festival, like Ozzy Osbourne, Marilyn Manson wow. headline. Um, then we went to the Netherlands, a uh, suburb of um, Amsterdam, G uh, northern Germany, Hamburg, um, southern Germany, uh, Switzerland, Poland, Belgium, Spain, Finland, oh, like I, the, whole, the whole work. So like. A lot of the country, a lot of a lot of Europe, yeah. right? But you learned a lot while you were there. I learned a lot, not only about just seeing how they do life over there, as much as, and just meeting people oh, yeah. and getting it's immersed in that different. culture, way different. Um, but also, I was there for music, right? So I met a lot of people in the industry, and I'm like, you know, to be honest with you, so I I went there. I was not playing. I was tour managing, um, and nothing is worse than. Not worse, but it's kind of sucks standing when you're a performer. So, you know. You're, oh, you're yeah. Standing. I know exactly what you're going to say. St I stood on the side of the stage and watched people play in front of <laughs> 25,000 people. Yeah. Oh, isn't that suck? And it was just kind of like, it's not even like the music aspect just alone. It's I was like, what am I doing to put myself... Because for me, it's not just about music. Like, I... I I'm very multi-focused in life, and I'm like, 
all these things I want to accomplish, all these things I want to do, and at the end of the day, what I'm really working towards is a legacy, right, for myself. Right. And and not being a grumpy old man. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what a legacy is. Be. Don't worry about it. So You're fine. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, am I am I every day? Am I doing my best to get closer to those things? Yeah. Life? And you know, honestly, uh, I wasn't in a lot of ways. And I came back and I was like, I'm quitting those jobs. And I'm going to oh, yeah, you're taking convince, your own advice. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, oh, I should take my own advice. I'm quitting those jobs and I'm going to just find a way to make this work. Well, oddly enough, as this happened, my band's manager at the time, um, he was like, hey, actually, I'm starting a digital marketing company. He lives in Europe. And he's like, I need to contract some work out. So I got some work. I ended up my one friend who was paying me, he, he actually came to me. He's like, I'd rather, he's like, I don't feel like I'm getting enough out of this for what I'm paying you. I'd rather pay you more and have you do more work. So I'm like, there you go. This was meant That's to happen. Fucking right. Great. So yeah. I like, I wow. didn't even, I swear to Nate, I put my two weeks in at, the, at both those two <laughs> part-time jobs and it just happened. I'm like, whoa. So like when you really, you know, just allow that space in your life to yeah open up, things start happening. And, and, and so I sit here now and most of these clients, even like web design stuff that I've done, they've come to me. Right. Like I've not had to go out there and beg for people to, you know, to oh, work dude, with me and stuff great. like that. And, and that's hard too. It when is you're hard, in a man. client based system, man. Yeah, I get it's, it, dude. Hard. it's hard. It's very hard. And what I've just focused on doing is doing as good as I can for who I'm working with. Yeah. None of them ever stop working with me. <laughs> Knock on wood, fingers crossed. <laughs> but they don't stop working with me because I love working. I won't work with somebody that I don't believe in. Like, like yeah. the the girl that I that I helped with um, running her campaign. I believed in what she was running by, yeah. for, and I believed in what I would not work with somebody I just ideologically do not align with. Oh, yeah, sure. I won't work with a company who's trying to make a quick buck or something. Everybody I'm working with, they're trying to build their brand. They're yeah, trying they to. They have a similar vision. They have a similar vision in life, and when you align with people like that for for business or or music or things like that. There's just a lot of power and a lot of uh, yeah. synergy that comes out of that. So, I just, I love it, and it's like every every month, every two months, it's just it keeps growing, and I'm really optimistic about it. That's the thing exciting. I like about it the best is like you know, so my girlfriend works a weird schedule, so she only has certain days off. And not, guess what? I if I want to work Sundays, I can work Sundays. If I want to work, if I don't want to work Fridays, I can work. I cannot work Fridays. It's like my schedule's grass. up to me, right? You know, it's and the best. it's ultimate freedom. It's the yeah. ultimate freedom, and that's what really what I've thought about a lot in my life is like these meta um, trends and these just what I'm really after, right? And how that fits into everything else I'm doing, and really one of them is freedom, right? Oh yeah, financial freedom, freedom like schedule freedom. If I want to, <laughs> like my deal, like if I want to fly to you know Zimbabwe. I could do it, <laughs> you know, like I it sounds it. ridiculous. I wouldn't. I'm not going to go there, <laughs> but uh, I will right go to now. Aruba. I'm going to Aruba the day after Are my you? bodybuilding competition. Oh, that's exciting. But, you know, basically what I'm trying to say is I feel free. And yeah. I feel that that has really taken a lot of stress off my life because that's where, that's where I am supposed to be. Yeah. Now, it might not be where, you know... Jimmy's supposed to be, but that's where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Jimmy, just use an example name. No, you hate a guy named Jimmy. Yeah, I, I know really it. Something I him. hear I it. Gotta talk I about hear it in your voice. <laughs> you made like a face and yeah, held up a but, picture. Yeah, but you know, that's the thing, man. And that's what I really want for people is yeah. to uh, explore what where you should be in life. Like you, you know, we're not, I think in our society, we're not like given that chance a lot of times. No, it's just, you know, society. Even coming from like, I came from like a, you know, a middle class, upper middle class background. And it was like, who my, expected the day, you to go to school? Yeah. I, the day I came out of my, my mother, my dad started saving for me to go to college. Yeah, exactly. Like no, no question. You're going, you know, this and that. Not that I'm not thankful for that. I no. am. Right. Cause they want the best for you. They yeah. want the best for me. Yeah. And that's what they thought was best. You know what? Oh, yeah. In their time, that was what was best. Exactly. Absolutely. Today, not so much. It oh, might exactly. be best for you, but it might not. And you should be given the chance to explore that. I always say it's so funny. My two, three friends that make the most money did not go to college. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Isn't like, that so funny? a lot more than my friends who went to college. Oh, yeah. You've had... That's very interesting as well. 
do you so the last in the last year unparalleled height is gone too so what yeah that's a good that's yeah a good, so what what's been that experience okay so i'm gonna play a song at okay the beginning of this podcast too, okay because I've, I've wanted to do that with bands that i Sweet. have on play yeah a song so I'm okay gonna- so um make a very long story short this was already kind of taking place when I came on your podcast last time. Was it right? So I, I, it's funny. I, like I said, going back and listening to the last one, I'm just like, wow, yeah, that's when we were like writing. We were getting close to go, going to the studio because we went to the studio in September of last year, so almost a year ago. Okay. Um, you know, our producers, who I became very good friends with, during I was already friends with them at the time, but like going on on that tour with them, I got a lot closer, and you know, they're like, listen. I think your name's hard to market because it's been misspelled 27 different ways. Oh, yeah. You know, just different stuff, blah, blah, blah. There's the sound even itself <laughs> is a little. Hype, yeah, yeah. H-I-T-E, or just even the, yeah. the sonic of the music that we were writing that's now part of this new project called Tethra. That's yes. what we're called now. Yeah. Is, it was a lot different in terms of, you know, the metal genre niche. Like yeah. It's a little bit niche differently. Is, is it the same guys? So it's. My lead guitar is CJ, who's like one of my best friends. Yes, the bassist Marshall. Yes, drummer is not. This guy Seth, who we're good friends with, he stepped up to the plate, right? Um, and came in, and we only have four now, and it's you know it's a yeah. lot more productive. Like at one point with Imperial Height, we had six members. And oh, was, do you find that to be unproductive with more people? It has. Yeah, to. You have too many opinions. It, has it depends to. on it depends on how. I mean, it's even tough sometimes with four. To be honest mm-hmm. with you. Um. Too many opinions sometimes, and what happens is a lot of people start fighting, and then you don't get anything done, and then yeah. here you are two years later, and your album's not out. It's just yeah. a mess, right? So so the breakup was just logistical in terms well, of name? So yeah, 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 okay, so good point. I should say that. It was more of a That's rebrand. A so re-brand. it's two completely different projects. Like, yeah. hypothetically speaking, on Parallel Heights, not dead, right? Yeah. If we wanted to put more music out under it someday, we, we might. Yeah. But Tethra is like what we're working on now, okay? Right. And um, we have so so far we have three singles out, and we just launched this in like March. Oh yeah, I know, and I'm sad. like f- really really happy with how it's done so far. Yeah, in a in a lot of ways, and you know we have a whole album that we're gonna be putting out. I I think at the beginning of September. Yeah, and like we just we so we shot a music video for that. Um. We saw a couple of music videos, but we we shot a new music video uh, about a month ago. That's almost done, and that'll come out with the the album. Uh, it was a crazy shoot. I mean, we shot it at this place called Penhurst Asylum. Okay. That's in it's like outside of Philadelphia, kind of, okay. and it's super haunted. Like it's uh, supposedly super haunted. It used that, to be man. an asylum. It closed fuck down that. in like nineteen eighty something, and it's a creepy ass place. No, so I don't want. <laughs> yeah, and the night before that, I slept for like an hour and a half. And I bet. I bet. It was just fucking awesome. Let me tell you. <laughs> you make me like metal a lot because you're not a scary. <laughs> you're not a scary person. Yeah, I think of metal as like you're gonna. I'm good. Well, like I was taught when I was everything. growing up too. My, my yeah. dad told me that. <laughs> yeah, like a cool person. You're the coolest, by the way. I'll Thank you. you dude. No, right seriously, now, dude. I I really and I really this is a compliment to you. Like I sincerely love conversing with you just because. First of all, we oh, yeah. we don't talk all the time, but it's like when we're ta- when we talk, it's always productive. It's oh, like yeah. it's like, th- th- and I have certain friendships like that where it's like, yeah, I haven't talked to you maybe six seven months, and then it's like I pick it up like nothing ever. Oh yeah, this feels like we picked up. I know. Right so I feel like I was just recording too. this first one with you a week ago. It's interesting. Yeah, I'm. Uh, would you spend any time out of Pittsburgh? Like live like living wise? Yeah, living wise. Would I or have I? Is that would what? you? Would I? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Does it Absolutely. make sense for you two with how much you have going on here? Mm, that's a great question. Um, I thought a lot about that uh, recently, actually, because my sister is, uh, she's finishing up PA school, uh, physician's assistant program at Duquesne. Yeah. And she did her last rotation in Florida. Oh, so my grandparents fun. spent half the year in Florida, half the you know, year up here. So I went down there for a couple couple days, rec- like last month, and I'm like, why do I live in Pittsburgh? <laughs> like, <laughs> I get it. Oh, you know, I get it. it's I have nothing against Pittsburgh, but it's like, you know, but then on the other hand, it's like I can travel anywhere. So, you know, this is kind of where my band is. This is where my family is. This is where a lot of my clients are. Like, you know, so it's kind of one of those things where I don't see a need to move. Would I someday? Of course. Yeah. I'm open to anything. Oh, yeah. 
It's just it seems like that's the How logical about progression. I'm moving to New York in a month. Are you really? Yeah. Okay. New September, York City. New York City. Yeah. Wow. Do comedy. Yeah. Looking at jobs. Uh, I've I've uh, interviewed a couple places. So you're moving for stand up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Me and Monica. First moving. of all, let's just. That's fucking awesome. Thank you. I I I'm not fishing that, for compliments. No no no. I, I'm I, serious I, when I, I say that. That, that is I I I have so It'll much good, respect man. for you for It'll that. It'll be good. And I'm excited. Man, that's like. That's a major move, man. Oh, yeah, That's dude. awesome. I've never lived outside of Pittsburgh. Yeah, I studied abroad for four months, but that doesn't count. Where did you, Where did you do that? London, oh, London. Which is yeah. it's not even a cultured man. I yeah. thought I was going over to London. I shouldn't say that. We have like three <laughs> London listeners, <laughs> people I know. We but love like, you. I did not find London to be culturally different. Like I thought I was going to. Oh, I'm going to be enlightened. I'm going to be cultured. I found myself sitting in a Starbucks across the street from a Chipotle. It's still the West. It's the West. Yeah. I. But that's why I love it so much. It's like. Yes. It's it's just an expansion of America. That's exactly right. That's and why I love to it. be honest with you, a lot with of a sexier accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that you know, there's like obviously some differences and stuff. Oh, yeah. But there's a lot of differences. You fly to California, so it's kind of oh, like exactly. You know, with south. Oh, south, <laughs> exactly. North, you know, it depends. New York City, you'll New York you'll City, look a little different culture yeah, a there. Jersey, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And you know, I found that a lot to, with Europe too. So, yeah. little differences here and there, obviously, and country to country. Obviously, like, oh, yeah. Finland was a lot different than Spain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, majorly different. Oh, yeah. Um, but I think that's really important, though. It When you meet people from other places and stuff, and that's why I'm really excited to go to places that I'm not culturally, you know, homogenous with. Like, maybe, like, you know, the West, like Japan, um, Australia. I mean, Australia's kind of similar. But... Yeah. I guess it's the East, technically. That's not the West. But... That is the East. The East, yeah. But, like, you know, uh, South Pacific places like that because it is so much different than here and the growth that i experienced just from meeting different people in those countries and stuff like that it changed me a lot in a positive way so i'm like oh, i yeah. assume if i go to places that are even more different that same kind of phenomenon would happen the my favorite thing i went with the glee club i was in the glee club at pit we went to italy and i i tell this story sometimes on here but we were we were drinking and we were in a park in Italy at two in the morning. It was like a <laughs> playground, right? It was in this like suburban neighborhood and like a car was passing by on the right hand side of the road and there was like a, just houses everywhere and I looked around and I'm like, if you placed me right here having no idea where I was, yeah. I'd be like, I I'm in Pittsburgh. I'm in somewhere in Pittsburgh I don't know. And yeah. I thought that was the most amazing, that was my favorite part of that trip because I love going to Europe to remember that the world's not, the rest of the world isn't on fire. That's the thing. That's man. what I love yeah. about it. And you know what? Like, it's and I'm like, fortunate enough of, to have gotten to go. Like, that, that's a big thing. You, Brent, you just struck a chord that I really been thinking about a lot. It's just I am unbelievably grateful for just any everything I'm doing, everything oh, I'm yeah. involved with, my family, my. That's a big difference between me now and the last time I was on here. I'm just I felt so much resentment towards. Not, I don't want to say my family and stuff like that, but a lot of people who are like naysayers towards me. Really? Go, oh, you're not gonna this yeah. time last year? Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, not not this time last year. Maybe maybe ah, uh, you know, it's a more recent thing. I've accepted. It's like I'm not a normal person. <laughs> oh <laughs> like, yeah. So, you know, having a child like that or having a you know a friend like that, that's not an easy thing. So, because you know when you're when you however you are let's say you are more of an average joe or you're and i don't mean that in any slight way or anything but let's say however you are you think everybody's like that when you're younger right so you you think oh yeah everybody's like me everybody oh, wants, yeah. you know everybody's driven everybody's you know this and that but no not everybody's like you you know and the quicker you realize that and understand yourself and how you fit in with other people i really think that for me all of these were growth steps. Like I had to feel like I was alone fighting by myself to become strong and have my own backbone. Yeah. See, that's interesting because I think of myself as somebody who for a long time just fought to be like a normal person. Like not interesting. a, not a, not a, like growing up, maybe it was, I, I think that's a lot of kids though. Like growing yeah. up, like I think you are, you fight to just be normal and to be accepted by like a group of friends or like Interesting. cool yeah, people. That's a really good and way then it's, it. and then it's growing in maturity. I think for me and being more confident with myself, that's when I was able to be like, Oh, I don't think I'm necessarily the same as everybody else. I think that's, when that's that a really, really good happened. way. That's a really good way of framing it. Um, yeah. I've never thought about it like that. That's, I think 
that society and especially where you know the culture we live in they're trying to mold when I say they I'm not saying it's like some grand conspiracy no, I but like the societal forces are trying to mold you into a certain way the ideal thing and this worked pretty good with our parents generation was go to college college is cheap in the 80s and oh, yeah. not, you know 70s 90s and get a degree come out work a 9 to 5 save your money retire get a pension you know social security travel you know that worked that was a good formula for them right um it's not the formula now and it's, it's not the formula of the future man oh, it's yeah. not because it's you know i something else so i got involved with a uh non-profit i actually was on their leadership board oh shit um it was an interesting end to how i left that but it was a basically like a uh political group okay, okay. and um Essentially, just I really started immersing myself in just like future trends and stuff like that. And it's just like people are not ready for what's coming. People are not ready. Like, you know, it's there is projected. I think it's McKinsey, who's like a big researching company for yes. future trends and yes. stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay. They predict that by I think it's 2030. It's something like somewhere between I don't know the exact number. You can look it up. 65 to 73 million jobs in America will be gone. Why? That automation? is in the nation. Okay. Automation. Yeah. Automa oh, automation. Yes. Automation. Yeah. yeah. I thought you said in the nation. Yeah. The automation, nation. Oh, yeah. automation will be the main culprit for it. Wow. But the other forces, the, people don't understand this. Okay. The majority of people do not work in like the STEM fields. They do not work in, you know, finance and stuff. Like, there's a lot of people who do these things. But like, I actually had this conversation with my dad the other day. You know how many people, you know what percentage of the U.S. workforce works in STEM fields? STEM is science, technology, engineering, math and um, either manufacturing or math. I can't, I think it's math. 6.2%. Okay. That's wow. not very many people. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. I didn't think that either because most of my family is in, the, in those fields. Okay. That's really interesting. I didn't so well. where most people work are the biggest like sectors and, and things like that are retail and truck driving. Those are the two biggest. Okay? Oh, wow. Okay. Truck driving, if you're familiar, if you guys are familiar with this, is going to go by the wayside a lot because why? Because self-driving cars yeah, it's like and trucks coming. are already, that's already happening. Yeah. Right? Um, so that presents a problem. And I think there, uh, I don't want to keep throwing numbers out because I might be wrong, but Throw something them like out. five million. This podcast called Usually Wrong, <laughs> Yeah, dude. you know what? Like, Actually, I'll fuck <laughs> it. I'm going to go with it. So I think it's something like five million people drive trucks right wow retails like a lot. above 10 million it might be like 15 million it's a lot well what's the forces that are happening there automation automation e-commerce look at malls you know wow. how many malls are closing and have closed yeah right it's not That's like different it's For not sure. people look at these things like okay so, so then so then that presents another problem it's like okay so and even like things like um, accounting, um, you know, work that's predictable. So any work that's like predictable, like for example, um, sales or doing what you do, which is very like people oriented. Oh, yeah. Like so, you're it's very face to face. And, yeah. You know, that stuff can't really be replaced by automation. Not hard. I mean, not easy. But that not easily. If eventually, who knows? It could be done. Okay. But things like that have very predictable work. Those jobs are massive, massive jeopardy. Oh, yeah. And people are not ready for that. No. They're not ready for that. They're not ready for and that. And it's scary to think about. So so what I'm, so I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, you know, our education systems have really produced... What was so focused when I was in high school was science and math. Okay? I thought I was going to be an engineer. So I took all the high-level science courses, all the high-level math courses, yeah. calculus, college calculus, all that stuff. The problem is that... Computers and automation, artificial intelligence are way better at that stuff than humans are. Okay, what <laughs> yeah. humans are innately good at and and is creativity, communication, teamwork. Those are what built us through evolution. Yeah. Okay, and that is what will get us through the future of automation and things like that. Yeah. But that stuff has been stripped away in education systems. Yeah, it has. So it's a massive That's interesting, problem. Interesting. Yeah. You know. Um. Not trying to get too... You no. Know, Where do you <laughs> the, read about this? Where can I go okay, to find so more about I'm, it? I... Tons of sources. I mean, yeah. honestly, where would I even tell somebody to begin with something like that? Um, 
where did I become familiar with this? Okay, so I became first about automation, stuff like that. There's a guy running for president named, named Andrew Yang. He's an entrepreneur. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but yes. he's, yeah, okay, yeah, so he's he was running, on Rogan's podcast. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I actually heard about him. I listen to Sam Harris. I don't know if you're familiar with him. But uh, yeah, I know. Okay. He was the first interview on that um, on that podcast. So, I mean, his first interview was on uh, Sam Harris's podcast. And I was I actually listened to that when I was in Europe, when I was flying from uh, Poland to Spain. And I'm like, right. whoa, like this is some crazy shit. So I didn't necessarily, I was skeptical. Went and researched it. I'm like, this guy's telling the truth. Yeah. Okay. And like, even if he doesn't, he's like an outside candidate and people are like, oh, he's no chance. But he's done pretty damn good. Yeah, he's for, smart. He's too. a smart guy. Very smart guy. At least if nothing else, he's sounding the alarm. This is not political. This is reality, right? Like this is something that everybody's going to have to face. And if you think you're not gonna have to face it because your job's not in jeopardy, our entire society is going to undergo this. So yeah. if it's not going to affect you, it's going to affect your, your, maybe your children. It might affect your cousins, your girlfriend, your family, whatever it's going to affect your friends and people are not ready for this yeah We're, they're not ready for this and our systems in our society are not prepared for this either right so you know this is something that i became very interested in again between when i you know talked to her yeah. last and stuff and i became involved with the nonprofit. that nonprofit um was very focused on you know evidence-based science-based policy making it's like okay throw your po political ideology aside what is the truth what is what's best and what is in the interest of of people right so it was a very interesting experience working with them i was what is the the name of it? so they're called the, i here's the thing man i don't know if they're still around um i stopped working with them in march there was a big mess that i don't want to talk about but uh, okay. they're called the people of reason and progress okay so essentially i was the director of marketing for a couple months and it was really a, a good experience. Yeah. I learned a lot. And, um, you know, something else I want to talk about, you know, because we're talking about all this, this good stuff, you know, company, bodybuilding show, right. my bands, changing <laughs> names. I want to talk about a failure ahead. Oh, please do. If you don't mind. Please do. Okay. So last time I came on here, I was in the process of starting another business. <laughs> and that a business was originally going to be a supplement company. Okay. So, you know, pre-workout, protein, all that stuff. I um, had a business partner. Very good friend of mine. Still a very good friend of mine. Okay. Long story short, we hired a consultant who was going to do our packaging design. The consultant <laughs> ended up steering us on a path. He worked for a major supplement company. He's like, I don't think you guys should just do supplements. I think you should. Okay. He's like, you know, talking to us, he's like, you guys have a really good vision. You need to have like more of a lifestyle company. And so months went by. He eventually convinced us of this. The problem was we were so far off track. We spent too much money on, you know, we burned through our money essentially. Okay. We didn't have enough money to build a lifestyle company. You're talking about building a brand like that. Right. That's a, that's millions, years and years, millions and, years and, years and millions of dollars yeah. that we did not have access to. And we could not get the funding because we didn't have any sales and, you know, data and stuff. Right. Long story short, we ended up launching it. Okay. It was called Bold Society. And it was basically at the outset, it was like a clothing company, right? Mm. Did okay, but we realized we're like, man, we're going to have to spend a lot of money to market this that we don't have. Oh, yeah. So we decided, long story short, that it was better to just see it go bye-bye. Yeah. Okay? And that was in like the fall of last year. It was hard, man, because that whole process was like two years, and I never put the product in the market. I had samples Damn. of the pre workout. It was, I'm, I'm not just saying this, it was the best pre workout I ever tried. And that never went to the market because why? Because I let somebody else steer my ship. Right. Yeah. You let not my business else partner, the consultant. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a massive learning experience for both my, me and my business partner. What'd you learn from it? I learned that. You're, you're usually wrong. No, you're usually right <laughs> with your there. first concept, right? So, you know, it's very popular oh, yeah. as an entrepreneur to, or or even when you're writing stand-up, I'm sure, or writing music, to second-guess yourself a lot of the time. Yeah. Is this really the right riff? Is this really the right way of delivering this bit? I'm sure you go through that. Yeah. You know? But usually, 
if nothing else, like I could handle Nate if we put the pre-workout out and it didn't sell. Right. What I cannot deal with, and I have a hard time dealing with, is the fact that we never put it out. Yeah. The fact that I let somebody else dictate how that inevitably became. Right. I'm. I've made peace with it. Like I'm okay now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're doing fine. But that was a hard pill to swallow. It was very, oh, yeah. very hard pill to swallow. Yeah. Because it's not something. Well, you, it was. I, I forgive me for this, but it's not. Uh, what was I trying to say? You fucked up, but it's yeah. but it's from the suggestion of somebody oh, else. It no wasn't mistake. you coming it's up with the my idea. Fault, okay, yeah. like that's how I I own everything in my life. Um, I fucked up. Okay, and that's gonna happen in life. Oh, yeah. But one thing that I've learned about myself through that is that I have something, some weird like something just like almost like a disease in me that I will just keep going like I don't which is the best and that's the thing man like that's what I encourage any like I know there's probably people listening to this who are going either through a similar experience or like you know you probably have a lot of stand-up listeners who do stand up or you know yeah. write music and stuff like that the key guys really is it's not everybody's so big on tactics you know even look like what we taught in college it's not tactics it's like refusing to just be like, well, see ya. I fucked up. Yeah. Like, I guarantee you when you move to New York, it's going to be hard That's at gonna first. It's going to be fucking hard But what you're going to, yeah, but what you're going to inevitably find probably is that that is just going to, if you could just get over that hump and the next hump and the next hump after that. Yeah, for like 10 damn, years. Damn. Yeah. 10 years later, <laughs> you're like, you know what, Dave? You're not good enough to come on my podcast anymore because I'm interviewing fuck Rogan, right? You, so Dave. get the fuck off here. <laughs> but seriously, like, that's the thing, man is people underestimate that. It's just like, you know, you're looking at it because you're like, you know, you're, what, 25, right? Yeah. I'm 25, and it's like, oh, you should, uh, you know, have your own house and, you know, be having kids or whatever, you know, the normal societal sure. thing, right? But that's not the game that we're playing. Right. Right? And if you are uh, playing that great. game, it's fine. More power to you. I wish I could do it some days. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not how you're wired. It's not how I'm wired. And that's what I really want to encourage people to do is like find, spend time finding how you're wired. Yeah. Like discover yourself, Be, like find your, find your strengths, find your weaknesses, find what's those weaknesses are worth improving and, and do that and listen to yourself. Like stop listening to your parents and other people who are like, oh, it's going to be really hard, Nate. You know, don't move to New York. It's going to be hard. It's like, well, no shit. It's going to be hard or everybody <laughs> would do it. Right. Everybody would exactly. go right. Stand up. Everybody would go. Like everybody would go do these things, but they're not easy. Right. They're not easy. But if you're willing to invest like hard work every single day, you know, and obviously you got to enjoy your life too. <laughs> right. But if you're willing to do that for like 10 years, you could do yeah. whatever you want. The 10 years is not that long. Yeah. I mean, I look at it from stand up like it's the people who want to be around stand ups and people who want to be in in entertainment. They're going to be, but it's how long are you willing to put up with? No. Yeah, exactly. that's why it's like, as much as people look at like, you know, my, progr I, I've had this happen a lot actually recently with a lot of my friends, a lot of my friends with music, like they just never, for some reason, they, it was just, they, they were like off put by yeah. me doing it. Cause a lot of my friends don't like metal and stuff, but as we've released these new songs with Tethra. A lot of them come to me like, dude, what did you do between like the last <laughs> stuff in a parallel height and, and the new stuff with Tethra to make yourself so much better? Right. And I'm like, honestly, nothing. I just kept working at it. And right. that's the same thing. Like when I started lifting weights when I was 17, I'm not nearly as strong or as big as I am now. Right. Right. And that's just the power of continuing to work at something. Yeah. So I realized like with social R and marketing, that company's not even a year old. So 10 years from now. I'll be 35 yeah. and I think I'll be in a very good spot with it. That's fine. And that'll be what? 15, 20 years of music. Yeah, exactly. Who knows where I'll be with that, but it's the, it's the power man. of time. And you know, for a, people like you and I, it's not the ambition is not the problem. It's patience. Oh yeah. I patience is the problem. You know, <laughs> well, you got two quotes to choose from there, <laughs> man. I'm excited about that. I never have a problem with you. I'm going to listen to old things. And find <laughs> out, man. 
Well, or, or, enough or, about me. I want to hear more about how stand-up's going for Dude, you. Dude, it's going great. I could talk about it on this. We'll so, talk after about it. Okay, okay. It's right. like, well, I'm sure you're probably talking a lot, a lot they, on the episodes. People yeah. hear all about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this Thank you for... So, do you, so, moving to New York City, do you know where in New York City you're moving to? We're or? thinking uh, Jersey City, okay. uh, which is west of Manhattan, because okay. uh, it's... Uh, less expensive, more room, washer dryer, typically in unit. And Monica's coming with me. I was so gonna it's say, like she's I want to be so yeah, she's coming with you. Yeah, okay. so I I want to be in a place that like because I'm gonna be out every night. Yeah, I, I want somewhere that like she's gonna Seriously, and she will be you, too. Man. I that is she's she's loving it. She's, that is like I I sincerely it's like I see people do stuff like that, like you know what taking leaps in their life and they're just like everybody else is like oh man that's that's scary. I'm like fuck yeah like. Yeah. That's the person who's gonna make it. Like you, you making that decision, you probably feel like now, like yeah, that's that's really, it's an important decision. But you're gonna look back on that and go, "That's gonna be huge." Whew, thank God I made that decision. That's I was so huge. close not to making it, yeah. and I did it. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited for it. Yeah. So we're gonna do that, and then a uh, couple uh, contacts in New York, uh, moving. Not moving with a couple other people, but a couple comics from here are moving at the same time, which would be nice to awesome. know yeah. some names. It's and good, stuff. good and to have like moral support and people who are going to be going through the same struggles. Exactly. Yeah, I know people there already. Um, so it'll be good, man. It'll be good. I love New York, too. I so love I. New York City. Except for when it snows, but it snows here, too. I so what's the difference? I love snowing in New York City. You know what? City. It's better to be I in New York it. City when it's snowing because you don't really have to drive. You don't have to drive. You got to drive here. You gotta yeah. drive in uh, Upper St. Clair. You don't have to drive in your yeah, city. Yeah, and this fucking gets fucking bad out yeah. here, man. Yeah, it does, man. And <laughs> uh, yeah, you're not gonna miss that too much. I I'm think. not. You miss your family and friends and stuff, but that's the beauty of cell phones, right? Exactly. We live in the 21st century. It's not like you're moving and never gonna see these people. Yeah, I'm not bummed. Can always come back too. That's the other <laughs> thing. You could always come back. Right. You can always. That's the other thing I say to people. Like, you know, you quit your job or whatever. To start your business, whatever, like you can go back to a job. You're never going to yeah. like not be able to go back to a job. But what you're going to miss is the window of opportunity before you have kids and are married and have house payments and stuff like that to take these risks. Dude, in life. see our first episode of this podcast. Yeah, you got to go listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> So have you listened? So hey, thank you very much for doing this again. Of course, too, dude, man. I appreciate I'm it a lot. You're the first repeat guest, by the way. Oh, it's very wow. exciting. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to have you on again. So. Hell yeah, man. Do you, have you listened? I do not give a shit. Yeah. Either way, I'm just curious. Do you know the question I'm going to ask you at the end here? No, I actually don't. Oh, and exciting. and as a matter of fact, the reason I probably don't is because I have listened to bits and pieces of them, yeah. but I haven't made it. I do this with a lot of podcasts, man. This is what, I hate That's this about myself. Too. I don't listen to the whole thing, and like, I feel like. That's a really bad habit. Like it's not nah. just yours that I've done that with. Nah. I've done that with with other podcasts. I don't feel bad. I mean, there's so <laughs> there's people, so much. Th- I can't. Ex- I can't believe people will listen to an hour of this. I really can't. Like hey, if they find and a then value people in expect it? me to listen to four hours of something. Tom Segura and Christina. Oh Pete, my They gosh. do four I, hours. Rogan's love podcast it. with Alex Jones. Yeah, it's five crazy. hours long. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I didn't I'm, listen I'm to unashamed it. to say I watched it twice because it was that good. <laughs> that <laughs> good of uh, just comedic value to me. <laughs> and the funniest part is it's not supposed to be funny. No, it's not. But it's absolutely fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah. Because he's a Five fan. hours. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Imagine yeah. you sitting in here for five hours. Gary Vee did a 10-hour podcast. It's crazy. A lot of caffeine. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh... Last year, it yeah. was around the. It was right after we did this podcast. This has been a question on from episode like four or five to everybody in between. Uh, Monica and I started dating a couple weeks after, but uh, right after we did the podcast last year, her friends asked me this question. Okay. To kind of gauge who I was as a human being, so I've asked everybody since I okay. heard the question. So I'm going to ask you this as well. Uh, so Dave, you're at a bar. Okay. Night is going very poorly. Uh, the bartender was revealed to be a Nazi, has been poisoning people's drinks. There is quicksand in the back of the bar, Is has swallowed up 20 or 25 Asian couples. It's racist quicksand, so it's bad night at the bar. But it wow. is also karaoke night. <laughs> and it is your job to save the entire night by song. What song are you singing to oh. save the night? Wow. What a great question. It's a fun closer. Well, first of all, before I go on stage to sing, I'm going to take the bartender's face and smash it into the uh, 
the the, yeah, the bar as yeah, hard as are. I can. And then you're the first guest who could actually do that. I <laughs> promise you. <laughs> well, who knows? It could be bigger than me. Hey, Bartenders could be pretty big. Hey, um. Man. Then I'm gonna go. Man, what song am I going to sing? Oh, to save the night. Well, the the problem with that is <laughs> philosophically is that. I don't think anything I could sing would outdo the death of Asians. Be- Abs- racist quick. Listen, okay. absolutely. I so? understand. You think that. it's possible? Uh, well, I think there's things to at least lighten the mood. Okay, lighten, lighten, <laughs> lighten the mood. I understand what you're saying, though. Um, what I would... Oh, man. This is a tough question. It's a tough question. This is a tough question, especially because I listen to like so much heavy stuff that's like... Nothing's gonna really. I want you to pick something that you feel good about singing. So, (laughs) it's like there's a couple different ways I could look at that. (laughs) This is why. This is why nothing is ever an easy fucking answer. (laughs) Such an analytical guy, man. It's so ridiculous. I love it. It's so ridiculous. Okay, so I'm gonna sing something. I I think the best the best course would be to go something like happy, jovial, upbeat. Yeah. Maybe something like like '80s song, like you know, Journey, Don't Stop Believing, something like that. Because, you know, everybody's going to start singing along with you with that. Yes. Right? Yeah. If I start singing, like, something that nobody knows, people are going to be, like, looking at their phone, looking at their watch, and they're yeah. like, oh, shit, there's a Nazi in the back of the yeah, thing. Right. Like, the, the quicksand's going on. Is it great? It's got to be something 80s. It's got to be something fun. Maybe, like, Duran Duran. That's a great... I'm going to go with something by Duran Duran. Okay. I don't want to prison myself to a specific song. Okay. However, I'm going to go with something by them. You're saying something from the discography Cheesy of 80s Duran Duran. old synths that are just ridiculous songs that people know, something that would be popular enough that people would be singing along with because everybody's going to be drunk. That's probably what I would and do. freaking the... Fuck yeah. Out. And then I'd hand the mic to them. Uh, like, you know, give it to the crowd. Typical thing, of course, that all of us performers do. And then, as that's going on, they're singing that. That's when I take care of the Nazi. That's great. <laughs> that's a great... That's the most S- solid answer so I've ever had. So, when you asked me the question, you said, <laughs> this tells a lot about a person, right? So, what kind of answers do... Is it, well, I is agree a, with you. Is there a specific... Like outcome from that? That no. Okay. I'm just so curious what the song. I'm gonna have to use that. I'm more. I love the question. With people, just like not on not on a podcast or anything. I just want to ask people that. I said. I said. Take on. Oh no no no. I said. Um. Time after time by Cindy Lauper. Again, another good one. People be singing along with it. People love it. Yeah. I think it's great. That's a great question. I couldn't come up with a more ridiculous <laughs> question if I wanted I know, to. right? They didn't have all like the Nazi stuff in the question. Yeah, I added. Oh, uh, that. that's your see. That's, that's your the, comedic, creative uh, insight. Well, we try. Here yeah, to to do that. Thank you very much, man. Do you have anything else you want to plug? Yeah, actually, I do. <laughs> so Please. I mentioned to you that I'm starting a podcast myself. So yes. my band's manager and me, who's become a really good friend, um, we start we're starting a podcast. It's not launched yet, but it's going to be called the Boldcast. And um, I want to bring you on it. So, oh, thank you. Uh, I actually I talked to him. To. About, I was like, oddly enough, and that you were one of the first people I thought of of bringing you on because, you know, we know nothing about comedy and people want to hear yeah. about it. We're trying to interview a lot of different people across a lot of different fields. So it'd be like two formats, one where we interview people and then one where him and I chat just about try. Yeah. We just, just shoot try. the shit like we're doing right now. Um, so got that. And then Tethra, Good. you know, find us on Spotify uh, tethra.com I mean I'm sorry facebook.com slash tethra instagram at tethra band um, those are the things I really want to plug right now and if you're by chance listening to this and you want help you know marketing yourself or your or your your music your business whatever it is more than happy to help um, social marketing.com is where you can find out what my company does social R and aura. aura I keep saying no, that's R okay. R like yeah social, social aura, aura marketing dot com is where you can find out uh, the list of services that I do and I mean I'm used to working with small businesses bi- small budgets bigger budget whatever I love working with people so um, yeah that's basically what I'm plugging I guess that's great man you get to sign us off I didn't have a sign off last okay. time you get to sign us off you get to say anything you'd like I've had people be super nice be inspirational I've had people say the fucking stupidest shit in the world you can say whatever <laughs> you'd like <laughs> Well, um, I'm not a comedian, so the thing is, I'm not going to try to be funny. What I will say, though, is like, and I don't mean to be like just overly, you know, cheesy or anything, but like, really at the end of the day, 
you got to think about life like this. You're going to die. And uh, the only reason this life has any meaning or any purpose at all for any of us is because there is an end at some point. None of us know when that end is. None of us can uh, predict it. All, all of us, there's a clock running. And at some point, and I'm going to go back to what you said on the first podcast. <laughs> okay. There's going to be five minutes left. Yeah. And think about it like this. Are you going to spend that five minutes regretting things you didn't do? Or are you going to spend that five minutes happy about what you did do? And it's as simple as that, guys and girls. And it's it's really, life is not, ta- it's not as tactical as it is just finding what makes you happy, finding what you're passionate about, and, and doing it. And you know what? If you fail, who gives a fuck? Seriously, who cares? I failed so many times in my life in so many different things. I'm still here. I'm still happy. I still live and breathe and eat and do all the things that people want to do with their lives. And I failed a lot of times and I will fail more times, but I know at the end of the day that it's about chasing that happiness. If you want to move to New York city to be a uh, comedian, do it. Who cares? Go for it. That's what gives your life meaning. That's what gives your life purpose. And the more people that are doing that, the more people who are living in their element, so to speak, the better this world is. So if you really want to make the world a better place, start living life in a way that makes you happy and fulfilled. And that is all I have to say. Hey, Dave. Fucking amen. Amen. <laughs> <That's my fun. laughs> Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time, hopefully. <laughs>